Now that I've inputted my historical financials, I have to project the financials out. I'm doing a period of five years here from 2015 to 2019, uh, just because five is a round number. In reality, what you want to do is project as long as you can uh, until the business levels out and starts growing at the same level as the economy. So while it's in its growth stage, it's going to be hard to get a terminal value, which we'll cover later, if the business is still growing when you stop uh, valuing it. You know, same thing, if it's shrinking fast and you think it's going to stop shrinking, um, you would want to do that as well. Uh, although usually you don't value companies that are shrinking rapidly. So I chose five years here. I really can't see past that as an investor. Maybe some industries where if it's an investment in an oil rig, for example, where you can predict um, you know, the amount of oil supply in the ground and how long it'll take to get it out, you might go out 40 or 50 periods. But uh, you know, for a normal company, most consumers don't have visibility out past five years. And it's generally a pretty good one, a uh, pretty good range to start with. So uh, how are we going to forecast? Well. Um, you forecast growth, you know, this, this seems a little bit counterintuitive, but we can forecast growth using, you know, past knowledge of how the company has performed combined with news, information, perspective that we have. So but the first thing to do is get the past results. So I have some metrics and assumptions at the bottom. Revenue growth is one that I use to, you know, see how they're growing their revenue. Gross profit margin is another one to, to measure the cost of goods sold percentage. Um, for depreciation and amortization, this is not a good way to do it. It really depends on the business, but for now, I'm just going to use it as a percentage of sales and the SGNA as a percentage of sales, which is pretty good. Um, your drivers, so for, most of these are driven off of revenue. Um, actually, all of these are driven off of revenue. So you need to make sure your driver is right. You know, revenue growth is driven off of revenue. Gross pro profit margin is costs, which are dependent on revenue. Uh, GNA is SGNA, so it's the amount of people that are hired and support. And the question is, are these proportional to revenue? Well, sometimes uh, they definitely go up with revenue. For example, if your revenue went up, you probably have more stores, which means you need more paper and HR people and legal people. But it might not go up at the same rate. Um, GNA, you know, should shrink with economies of scale. Um, the business, the, it should shrink over time. We're seeing a, a slight shrink here. So in 2012, it was 8.1% of sales. Now it's 7.8%. You know, DNA is about the same every year as a percent of sales. Gross profit margin stayed about the same, so they're not really growing uh, or shrinking their cost structure. And revenue growth has stayed about the same at 20%. So first I'll take an average just to show that uh, this is about what average, this is about what we've done. I checked to make sure there's no significant variability, which there's not. Uh, so I can be pretty sure that they're gonna keep their cost structure at about 24% you know, gross margin. I'm okay with that average. Uh, DNA is percent of sales, I'll keep that going on. And uh, gross uh, GNA, sure, 7.8%. Maybe they'll go down over time, but uh, for now, I'll just put that as the same. Gross, uh, sorry, revenue growth, on the other hand, it's hard to believe that they're going to keep up a 20.7% growth. So I'll just do a tail off with hard codes, five, three. Um, you know, it's probably going to be better than that, given their past history. I don't know how much geographic expansion they have left or how much in-store gro sales growth they can do. Those are the two factors you want to look at for revenue growth with this company probably, um, but that'll do for now. All right, so then now that you've you know, determined your, I made these blue by the way because I inputted these each individually. Uh, they're not a formula. These are all formulas. All right, so now that we've done that, we can grow everything. So this is going to be the last year based on times, times uh, one plus our forecast. So that is our next year's revenue growth. Um, let's make sure this formatting is all good. Should have just control R to mess that up. All right, so cost of goods sold is going to be uh, you know, uh, gross profit margins. I'm going to do one minus four percent times that year's revenue, and that'll forecast this out. Right. And I'm going to keep this up. So DNA, I base it on a percent of sales. So I'm going to take the DNA number as a percent of sales for that year, multiply it by the sales. I did the same thing for GNA. And then other, I'm going to just keep consistent. And I'll make this red so that I know that I did that. All right, so other, I'm just going to keep consistent. I have no idea what other incorporates. I'm going to have to look in 
my financial statements to get a really good sense of that. But for now, I'm just going to keep it constant. I have it read so I can check it later. I probably won't for this example, but that's just what I would do. So anyway, you're finding the driver. You're basing it on your future forecast of the driver. We've already forecasted revenue, and everything else is based off revenue. So we can just forecast everything the same. Now we're going to you know, take these formulas, copy them over. I should be control Ring, but I put that line in the middle after 2014, so it's harder for me. Keep these formulas over so everything calculates. All right, interest expense is going to be based on debt. They don't have debt, so it's likely to be zero, but we're going to build out a debt schedule later. So I'm going to leave this blank for now. And same with taxes. I'm going to leave this blank for now. Actually, you know what taxes? We will just find an average historical tax rate. So that over pre-tax income. And we're going to take the average of that. And we're just going to use that average over time. So tax rate, you know, pre-tax income, um, tax rate, and then great. And this is actually earnings before tax, not earnings before interest and tax. Great. So there's our income statement, all forecasted out. You know, we'll look like this company is going to make a jump. Um, you know, we'll look and see if this makes any sense at all. It really, I mean, it's a little, it's a little bit ridiculous. We're gonna let's do a Kager here. Kager is constant annual growth rate. Please look that up if you don't know what it is. All right, so net income is growing at a rate of. 22% a year. That's you know really high. Um, that's really really high. So I, I would hesitate to think this the business this business could actually do that. I'm gonna go in and revise some of these um, downwards later. Uh, right now it'll stay like this until I can figure out why it's off. I'm gonna have to go into you know analyst reports. I'll go into the news. I'll go into their you know, filings and see where I'm off because 22% is just you know does not pass the newspaper test. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if they can do that 22% a year. Granted, they've done it historically. They've probably done that, um, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to continue. And this makes complete sense. This 22% because you know their revenue is growing at 20% per year, but their cost as a percent of sales has stayed the same. And we can see that all these averages, there's no fluctuations here. So it makes sense their net, that their net income would go up at the same rate as revenue since nothing else is changing. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the balance sheet. We got to forecast the balance sheet. This is where things get tricky. Uh, right now, I'm going to go down to each line and see what's, you know, what is a one-time thing or doesn't change much, and I'm just going to have that equal backwards. But for the rest of it, we're going to need to do different schedules for different parts. Um, you know, working capital is something that we'll need to calculate later. So anything involved in working capital, uh, these working capital, uh, I, I am not going to forecast right now. Cash, we're going to assume that all cash in the business is excess cash, meaning they don't need it, so it's not in working capital, and we're going to use a cash uh, flow statement to do this later. Working capital is, you know, business needs, that, bu cash that you need to run the business today, um, so it'll be accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses. Some of this cash is probably necessary today to cover, you know, one-time expenses, but we're going to assume all of it's excess cash for now. Uh, deferred tax assets and restricted assets. Those are complicated financial things, and I am not going to cover those in these lessons. This is, this is a beginner lesson, so I'm just going to make those equal to the past year. And I'm going to, again, mark it red so I know. Uh, Goodwill only really changes if they have significant mergers and acquisitions. I'm not going to forecast any of that because I haven't done the reading on Buffalo Wild Wings, and I don't know. Other assets, I don't know what it includes. It looks like it grew pretty significantly, but because I'm lazy, and this is just a beginner thing, we will assume that other assets won't grow. Okay, uh, property plan and equipment is more complicated. We are going to calculate this later in a separate schedule. Current liabilities, same thing. So what's in working capital? Um, all of these are in working capital. So I'm just going to leave these uh, empty, and we'll do the working capital schedule later. Uh, Long-term liabilities, again, I'm just going to make this constant. Make that red. I deferred these credits and other. I don't know. Long-term debt, I'm going to make a debt schedule, so I'm going to leave this empty. And then other liabilities, 
I'm gonna, it looks like it jumped around, but this is pretty small compared to their total assets. So I'm not gonna be too concerned about what's going on there. Um, and I'm also going to take this, and copy all these formulas over so that these sums calculate and I can just double check to make sure everything's working later. All right, retain earnings and common stock, we will cover those later as well. All right, so now I've forecasted basically everything that I can forecast without those separate schedules, and the next step will be to do a working capital schedule.